It might be a jacket, a blouse, a dress that has princess seams, but it doesn't come in your bust cup size. So that's what today's about. Full bust adjustment with a princess seam. Very practical. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today is a little bit about fitting. I do like making these videos every now and then. I know they're really helpful for you because it's not just about sewing garments and perfecting sewing techniques as such. I think expanding your horizons into learning how to fit your body are going to make a huge difference as well on your sewing journey so I do have a lot of content on the channel about fitting I have a running current series on the channel about fitting tops this area I also have a fitting series on pants so I'll link all that information down below I have a previous video on the channel that dives really deeply into full bus adjustments and it includes the theory why how much how it looks like when something doesn't fit well how it looks like when you've corrected it so this is not what this video is about I'm not going to repeat all that content again because the theory behind why you need to do one is already in that video what we're going to do now is focus on the small differences that you'll find with different designs so for example I've made a full bust adjustment video about dolman sleeves because it's done a little bit differently than if you had a full armhole. This time we have a princess seam and I'm going to show you examples of a princess seam that comes from the armhole which is the one that you see the most this one you can also have a princess seam that comes from the shoulder but I'll touch on that in a set this one will just as a general concept here if you have never heard about full bust adjustments and cup sizes a sewing bust cup size is not the same as the bra cup size that you wear so if you look at your bra and you see that it says that it's a D cup size for your bra that doesn't mean that you're a sewing D cup size because bra cup sizing uses the under bust and the full bust measurement to create the cup for the bust because it actually cups the bust for sewing it's about the fitting the neckline and the shoulders and the projection that that bust has forward so it's basically about the high bust and the full bust so it's different things forget about what you see on your bra just measure your high bust and your full bust and you'll know what your sewing cup size is if you have a two inch difference that is a b and a lot of brands just draft for that might not match you might be a c or a d you can see how these go up in one inch increments so i am a sewing c cup size it's one inch and it does make a difference it really does if you have a d sewing cup size it's a two inch difference from the original so i think it's something worth considering and if a garment has a princess seam yeah it's definitely worth doing that adjustment so that you get a better fit focus on this style that is a little different because because for a front you have two pieces instead of one full front you won't have an original dart there like you do on other garments so it's a little different but sort of very very similar a few weeks ago I was getting ready to sew a blazer it's for my monthly sew alongs on patreon and it's a really beautiful style I'd wanted to sew it for ages and this one does have a princess seam comes from here it has beautiful shaping just a beautiful classic design but I know that that brand drafts for a B cup. They don't offer cup size options. So I knew that I was going to need to do some changes there. And it was a really good opportunity for me to film this as well. So I want to show you how the test garment fits for this blazer. I've sewn it with a B cup. And I want you to see the subtle things that can be improved. You know, of course, if I had a larger cup size, the elements that you would see that a poor fit would be much more drastic. But it's still there are things that can be improved. And as reference, I am not a B sewing cup size. I am a C sewing cup cup size that means that the difference between my high bust and my full bust is three inches not two which is what the standard is in a lot of sewing brands they draft for a b cup there are lots of people that have a b cup and lots that don't and i think it's important to correct that so let's see i use contrast fabric so you can see the side piece and the center yeah, i marked where the button hole and button is going to be it's got the princess seam here originally made for a b cup and i do want to do a full bust adjustment and transform this into a c cup if i just adjust this right here i have slight pulling here right at the fullest part of my bust and it's just the front there's no issues on the back so i definitely need that little bit added where i'm going to do that full bust adjustment right there and i think it's going to make the fit a lot better it's not going to be super dramatic i'm just taking it from a b to a c but it will make a difference and get rid of this slight pulling that i have right there otherwise shaping wise the the princess seam is already doing a pretty good job here i don't have really dramatic drag lines like this you know maybe if my cup size was larger i would have a bit of diagonal drag lines like this in this case it's not too dramatic but there is just a little bit i've sewn this just as is i haven't lowered the princess seam curve or done anything like that and what i've done here is mark on that center front where my 
actual bust apexes, my bust height. So to take this jacket from a B cup to a C cup, all we need to do is add half an inch to the half of the pattern. You're basically adding an inch across the front, but because we're just adjusting for half, what you're going to do there is only half an inch. And that's the amount that you increase as you increase cup sizes. More detail about this in my previous full bust adjustment video. So what we want to achieve with this full bust adjustment basically is add some length at the center front, which you need because of the bust volume. It goes over here. You don't want this to be pulling up at the center front. You also want to add some width across here, but at the full bust area, not above in this area. In this whole process, the bust height on that original pattern is gonna drop a little, which will usually make sense because if you have more bust volume, your bust height is usually a little bit lower than what's drafted. And it will also bring that princess seam a little over towards the side away from the center, which usually matches what what your body needs if you have a larger cut volume. All these changes are going to be achieved by making this full bust adjustment on the princess seam. As with every single full bust adjustment, what's not going to be changed is armhole length. You're going to fit the same sleeve there. Your side seam length is not going to be changed as well. When you do the traditional full bust adjustment, there's usually a dart there and if there's no dart there, you generate one. If there is a bust dart there, it goes wider. In this case with the princess seam, we don't want to end up with a bust dart there. So there is a little process. <laughs> It's really easy, I promise. This next segment that shows you how to do it is not too long. So let's see. Here is the side front piece and this is the one that I want to do the full bust adjustment on. This is where most of the changes happen. There will be minor changes done to the center front piece, but those are done after doing the changes on this one. It's a little different, but also pretty much the same as other full bust adjustments. Right here, we have this notch that marks the fullest part of this princess seam. That is going to be one pivot point right here. Put the other pivot point right here. So it's basically almost cutting on the seam line right there from that point up to that point right here. And then from here, I've just drawn a line straight down, almost at the seam line there. So basically we just need to be able to spread this out. You do need to cut inside your seam lines. Now the other line that we need to draw is one that comes from here up to that point. And you can see the grain line here, Mark. So I wanna draw a line that's perpendicular to this. I have this simple ruler that has this 90 degree angle here and it's really helpful. So I'm just gonna align the straight edge here with the point there. I'm gonna draw a line right here and extend it to the side all the way over here. You can see that the line is within the seam line. So we're gonna change everything from the inside, but all of this is gonna sort of stay the same. So the same as with other bust adjustments, we're gonna cut from the bottom right here, all the way up and up to that dot right here. And then I'm gonna cut from here up to there, right there. Now, in order to be able to pivot properly, we need to cut from the edge up to the dot so that there's a little pivot point right here. So that's gonna allow that to move around. And then on this line that we drew, we need to cut from the side up to there, leaving a pivot point here. So you can see how now we're gonna be able to open this up like this. And that's how the full bust adjustment is gonna be done on this princess seam. I want to add half an inch here. So to make it easier, I just cut a really long piece of paper, it's pink. And I actually drew the half an inch there all along. And that's gonna help me place this on the back and do it nice and neat. So I'm gonna sort of take this out of the way and just place my pink paper behind here. So I'm going to align this edge that I cut with the lines here. Okay, so we know that a full bust adjustment extends this front. So I'm gonna cut it in any place, just close to the bottom here, just across like this. You can see that this has this angle here. It's supposed to be like that because of the design. I'm just gonna continue it. And now this is where I'm gonna place this piece that I cut out. So I wanna make sure that the hem line here stays even right there. I'm gonna trim away the excess and I do wanna keep this original shape here. So I'm just gonna cut from behind. And that's how this just becomes longer here while keeping this shape, that's super important. Okay, so let's look at what's happening up here. We still have this dangling. And remember this pivot point right here? Here I'm also gonna cut from the edge up to there to allow this to pivot like this. Remember we're trying to separate this half an inch from this very point right here. I have that half an inch and I know because I have my paper behind there with a half an inch. Okay, that looks nice and flat. Make sure your pivot points are working nice. You're gonna have this one here and that one up there. And you can see that by working everything out, we've opened up a dart right here and this extra volume there as well. Added about three eighths of an inch. So now that I have everything correct, I'm gonna tape it down. Here 
you can see the extra length that was added. I'm going to fill that up with paper. You can see I've got some excess pink paper under here. I'm going to trim that away. Here you can clearly see where the extra half an inch starts and then it goes all the way down there. Here we separated that and dropped it down so that the hem makes sense and then filled that all up with paper. And now we have all this excess in there to fill up at the back as well. Now of course we don't want to leave a dart here on our princess seam. We have to eliminate this dart. Take the bottom leg of this dart and draw a line all the way across to the edge right here. It's going to end up a little lower than that notch that marks the fullest part of the bust. And we're going to cut but only up to here. This is going to be a pivot point right there. Let's cut the bottom part of this dart up to that pivot point and then from this edge we're going to cut up to there and we get a pivot point there. This is how now we can just move this and close this dart and then this is going to open up and that's going to create a little bit of an excess right there. So we're essentially closing this dart and by closing it we make this curve more pronounced. So I'm just going to tape that up now. I'm going to fill this up at the back as well. So let me show you up closer. You can see that that has been closed there. When we pivot to that, that opened that up to keep the pattern flat. If we measure the gap, you're not measuring this distance, you're measuring at the seam line there from here to there. For me, this is negligible. It's like a 16th of an inch. If you are doing a larger full bust adjustment and you're adding an inch or an inch and a half, then your dart is larger and then this would open up much more. In that case, it would be really important to correct that on the center front piece. In this case, I'm not going to correct that because it's just negligible. I can just ease that in. I mean, it's a 16th of an inch. It's nothing basically. But this distance here, that is important that we fix in the center front piece. And now we're just going to fix the center front. This is where this is going to be sewn onto. Here is the notch that's going to match that notch right here. This is the little excess I have here that's a 16th of an inch. If this was say an eighth or a quarter, I would add that and I would just add that below the notch, just similar to where that's located there. And I would add it all the way across like this. So I would basically cut it, spread it, add a little bit of paper to correct that. But a 16th of an inch, I don't really think it's important. So I'm not going to correct that. Down further, I do want to correct this. So just to do it at the same place, I'm just going to measure from here, which is the hem right there, up to see where that is, six centimeters. So from here, from this dot right there, I'm going to measure the same distance, or six centimeters right here. So we have a grain line mark here. Just Let's just extend it further all the way down. And I want to draw a line perpendicular to that one. I'm going to place a straight edge of the ruler here against the grain line mark until I meet that point right here. And I'm going to draw across. And this is where I'm going to cut now and add the amount to match the length that I have here. The amount that was lengthened when we did the full bust adjustment was 3 eighths of an inch. If you're doing a larger full bust adjustment, then it'll be a bit more. But for this half an inch, that's the amount that I got extra here. And that's what I want to add over here. I'm going to just draw a line here, 3 eighths. What I want to do is keep this even right here. I'm going to align this along the line I marked and just make sure this is going to make sense right here at the center and then tape it down and trim away. So these are now going to match when we sew them together. Now what I did with my test cam was do my full pass adjustment and then I modified the center and the side for just half of the jacket so you can see. So the side that you're going to see that has the white side front piece, that is the modified C cup size and you'll see what the difference is with the feet. But this is the original one this is the modified one I've got the white princess seam now you can see that this is resting above my bust my apex is right here so I determined that before and I lowered my apex by an inch here is the new curve and the fullest part is there it's one inch lower and it's actually at my bust height now and I think it fits better on a princess seam when this is wrong you get a lot of excess here and you get tightness here because the fullest part is above and then when your actual bust is lower you get a narrower area there and that contributes to the pulling but also not having the right cup size so I'm really happy here I think this is great it's just half an inch extra from a B to a C now you saw that when I closed that bust dart there in this example that went from a B to a C cup that little base that opened up was negligible I didn't think you needed to add that eighth of an inch to the center front piece. But in the example that I'm gonna show you now, that is going to be different. And in this next example, we're gonna see a bodice. It's a more fitted design, it's not a jacket. The pieces are shorter because they are going to reach the waist and there is gonna be some sort of skirt piece under there. So in this case, I want to show you what it could look like to turn a B cup into a D cup. So we're increasing two cup sizes, we're increasing an inch. 
across this half. In total, across the whole front, you have an extra two inches while keeping all of this the same. So let's see. What we have here is a typical bodice. After this bodice that would reach the waist, you would have some sort of peplum or skirt or something. And here we have a center front piece and a side front piece. This is a B cut bodice. And I'm gonna show you how you can take this one to a D cut, for example. We're gonna start working on the side front piece. Look in the pattern, you always find a little mark that's going to help you put these together at the fullest part of the bust. Now what I've done here is draw in the seam allowances. This particular pattern uses 3 8 so you see my red line is marked everywhere. Same as on this area, it's marked as well. Another thing that is important to note is this grain line mark on your pattern. What we're going to do is draw a line that's perpendicular to this grain line that reaches this fullest part of the apex horizontally across. I have my cutting board right underneath and that helps me do straight lines and make sure that this is actually perpendicular. So I'm going to draw a line right up to the seam allowance mark right here. So this is actually going to be a little bit of a pivot point right here then I'm gonna draw a line from here up to there this is gonna be another bit of a pivot point right here and then from here I'm gonna draw a line down that's gonna be inside we want all the changes to happen within the pattern piece without affecting the stitching line further in from the stitching line at the bottom so here we have the lines you can see it's coming in from the stitching line by about a quarter of an inch going straight up up to there from that one right up to there and then this one going across here's the grain line and you're gonna have a 90 degree angle right there we're gonna cut from the bottom up to that little dot right here and then cut over here up to this next little dot now over here we're gonna cut the seam allowance up to that dot we need that to be flexible we also need this top area to be flexible and then across here right there the lines that you drawn here are very similar to the typical full bust adjustment you do so now here is where you would add the width that you need we're going to transform this into a d cup side piece this is the b originally so now we want to add an inch over here the more we add the more change is going to happen to this piece the less we add the less change so if you wanted to just take it to a c cup then you would add half an inch here and you've done all these little cuts so that the pattern piece can stay flat. That is the whole point of this. This is how the pattern piece would look if I was just taking it from a B cup to a C cup right here. Everything is completely flat. Keeping it like that, this is where you would fill it all up with paper underneath. You can see this went up and this would need to be lengthened. So I'd have to cut right here at some area to bring this down and to get this to reach this edge right here. I just wanted to show you how it looks like when you're changing it and making it two cup sizes larger. So we're basically going to make it one whole inch here. And you can see that keeping everything flat, this changes even more right here. This dot becomes bigger. So let's fill it all up with paper. I've got another color paper and I've actually drawn my one inch that I want to add. And I've left a little bit here and a little bit there to tuck underneath the paper. So I'm going to start by taping this on this area. Okay, now that that area is stuck right there nice and neat, I'm going to align this area. Remember, we always want to keep everything flat. That is the most important bit. So make, making sure this stays flat up here on the top. I'm going to move this this way, keeping it all flat. There, that's how it's going to go. Okay, so that area is done. And now we just need to put some paper behind all of this area. Okay, so everything's filled up with paper. I'm just gonna cut away the excess that's poking out from underneath these. I've cut away the bottom of this area and I'm gonna move it down to match this. So I'm gonna draw a line here, making sure this matches right there. And we can see we need to fill in this little gap as well. Remember, full bust adjustment always makes the piece longer, but only towards the center. It doesn't really change the side seam. We're not gonna leave a dart here, right? So we want to close that. So what I'm gonna do is take the bottom of the dart leg and draw a line across over here. Now, what I want to do is cut the bottom of the dart leg, but only up to here, up to the edge of this dart. From this onwards, we're gonna cut into there and this will be a hinge point. So let's cut into this area up to there and then let's cut into this area. Now we can close this dart and when we close this dart, this section is going to open up right there. I'm going to fill up this gap with the pink paper again. Now I'm going to draw the stitching line back in 
3 8 now I want to measure how much we added here but only at the stitching line not on the edge so when you measure from here to there it looks about 3 8 of an inch from what I can see yeah so basically this added 3 8 of an inch length to this area and this will happen when you take it from a B to a D if you did even further and added one and a half inches the gap opened here would be even more but you saw that when I was doing the side of the jacket because of the shape of it and just adding one more cup the amount added there was negligible I didn't think I needed to change the center front piece but with this amount added there I definitely want to change the center front piece so this is going to match okay so here we have our original center front piece and now we have our modified side front piece if we measure the length of this seam up to here this is going to be longer than this one we've added length in two areas here at the bottom and what we got here from opening this up and closing that dot so we basically need to sort of mimic what we've done over here to this area so that these are going to match this was 3 8 at the bottom I have another 3 8 I'm going to align this to one of these lines here and I'm going to choose an area towards the bottom to cut apart and add 3 8 right there okay so I'm just going to draw in the stitching line again blend these two lines so that they make sense so here you can see that this is the original apex mark the height of the bust right here but this is where it turned out to be it's like three quarters of an inch lower this is the original line right here so I basically want to add the 3 8 seam allowance from here downward from here so that this curve is going to match in an area that's going to make more sense when I put this together I'm still going to use my original line here and there so I'm going to keep those the same so that I can put this back together but I just want to add that 3 8 seam allowance right behind that probably in a quarter of an inch under it I'm also going to blend these lines back together and now we have two front pieces that are going to match each other that turned out to be longer in the center front area but still keep the original side seam length that's why you don't need to touch the back piece that's unchanged this area is unchanged this is this area that has been modified so you can see that in this case because the adjustment is larger you know that inch does make a difference when you are going to close that bust that the amount that opened up was done sure it was three eighths of an inch for this design and by adding that one inch there to the side front piece you definitely want to add that onto the center front piece as you saw there so the more cup sizes you add the more adjustments you're going to need to make to that center front now but what about this bust height you know this might or might not match yours I knew that from making this test garment the original bust height on the curve of that princess seam was high for me so that was definitely something I wanted to change I always think it's easier to change this after you've already done your full bust adjustment once you have your width everything's all settled then it's just easy to cut rectangles and just adjust either lowering it or raising it so I filmed a little refresher for you that's going to show you how I'm adjusting this jacket to get the bust height where it's supposed to be for me which is an inch lower on the original one you have a notch right there and that is the bust height of the pattern if I just draw a line here you can see that this is resting above my bust my apex is right here you know in a nice world this would be my bust apex but my bust apex is one inch lower than this so it's not here it's lower <laughs> and I know because I marked it on my test garment so this whole curve needs to come down a little I'm going to extend this grain line mark right here I think it's always helpful to extend it it's a good reference I want to cut a rectangle that is above this notch so I'm going to take the straight edge of my ruler place it on the grain line mark and just start sliding it over that is where the bust apex is right here at that point I want to go further up by about an inch and a half and from where I extended the line up here I'm just going to cut it up to there because this is a rectangle and now from this point down I'm also going to measure one and a half inches okay so here we have a nice rectangle remember this line that extends the grain line that's going to be the edge of my rectangle and I'm just going to cut this out and then just scoot the whole thing down by one inch I'm going to use green here and I'm just going to put this piece of paper behind there I'm going to measure the inch that I need to lower mine this is my personal fitting you know you might need different things and now I'm going to take my rectangle and just place it here and you can see that this just brought the fullness of this curve down 
You can see that right here, this is wider. So I'm gonna put a little piece of paper behind it and just bring that line into the original line here. You can draw this freehand if you want. And this makes total sense. You know, this fullest part just came down to where my actual bus volume is. My volume is not up here, it's down here. Now here you have two options because you have this original curve here and then you have that one. One option is for you to just blend the lines over here. If you have a fuller upper chest, if you have a more rounded bust, then you can just bring this in like this up to there. In my case, I prefer to trim away from here and back to this original curve because I always have to take away from my upper chest. I tend to not have that much volume there on my upper chest. It's, it's mainly down here. I want to leave up here as per the original because I want everything to match. So from here to there, I'm just gonna draw my new line right there. And this makes sense for me and my shape. I always have to take away excess from up here. This is the center front. Here's a reference mark that's really important for us. I'm going to make a rectangle also. It's just going to be around this area. And just to keep it similar to what I did to the other one, I'm going to draw about one and a half inches up from that notch mark right here. And I'm going to go in about almost four inches in. And then over here as well, I'm just going to cut this out and then just scoot the whole thing down by one inch. Get a little piece of paper and place it here. Measure the one inch and then get your rectangle and just stick it down here lower. Here I'm just going to smooth this out and the discrepancy here is not that much. So here we have the center front moved down one inch. Here we have the side front moved down one inch. You can see these are going to match exactly. Those aren't going to change. This is going to match. And then when you go down, everything's gonna match. Everything's gonna have the same length. Remember the side seams are unchanged with full bust adjustments. This has never been touched. You can see it's the original length it had. Remember we closed up that dart. So you don't need to worry about changing the back pieces at all. I think it's easier to just do the full bust adjustment first, get that done, fix this, fix the center front, add the length that you need, and then cut your rectangle and move it all down. You're left with a big, big mess right here, but it's quite easy to see the green paper it has to do with lowering the apex. The pink paper had to do with the full bust adjustment. Now, what about the waist? We've seen two examples here. One was a jacket, one was a bodice that hits the waist. So with the jacket, you know, I think you have more options there whether you want that extra amount at the waist or not. There's nothing that needs to attach and fit under there because it's just one full piece for that jacket. So I think it's just really easy for you to put your garment on and just bring it in at the waist if you want to, or just leave it with more ease if you want to, and that's what you need. So I think you're a bit more flexible with a jacket. But with a bodice, you know that there's gonna be some sort of item down at the bottom, like a peplum or a skirt. So if you've adjusted and your waist is not the same as the original, then you have a lot of options to think about, and it's got to do with your body as well. If you have a larger waist size than your bust size, then you might need that extra amount that was added to the area there with the full bust adjustment. In that case, you would need to increase the skirt so that would match that area. But if you don't need that extra volume at the waist, you know, there are ways that you can bring it in. So let's see. I mentioned that this would fit a skirt underneath. What's happened now is that you've ended up with a larger waist. So to add the ease right here, what you need for your bust, you've actually ended up with a looser waist. You might need that, you might want that. If you do, then you would have to adjust your skirt piece and you would have to add the inch to that skirt piece so that it would fit here. Otherwise, if you want to bring this back to the original and you want to take that inch away extra that you've added for the bust out of the waist, in this case, you have a lot more options than if it's just one full piece and that's because you have two seams to do it from. If you take away a quarter of an inch from here, you would end up with half an inch less. And then if you take the side piece from the back and take a quarter of an inch from here and a quarter of an inch from the side back piece, then you would have half an inch less, half an inch less. And that would be super easy. I would say a good two inches below where this curve is at the fullest part of the bust, maybe two and a half inches from here at the stitching line around this area. I would just start bringing it in and taking away a quarter of an inch. So let's just, let's just mark that quarter of an inch at the bottom, quarter of an inch here. You can see the green line, how I'm taking it in by a quarter of an inch on each side. When you sew that together, it will be half an inch less. So we're going to assume that this is the side back piece. Sometimes you have a princess seam on the side as well, or you just might have a full back piece with a dart. It doesn't really matter. We're working on the side seam here. 
And at the same level, at the same height there, I'm just going to align that and mark a dot. I would take in a quarter of an inch from here as well. So this would be modifying the back piece, but not because of the full bust adjustment. It's because you want to bring in the waist. So the green line is, would be your new stitching line. Then you would just have to adjust these seam allowances. And then you would have to trim off that excess paper right here. Same as over here. So even though you can still see that extra inch there, it has officially been removed in this stitch line and in this stitch line quarter of an inch here quarter of an inch there there and there when you sew them back together you're taking half an inch here and that will result in you taking an inch away from the waist area while still keeping all of this area for the bust the same if you didn't want an extra inch but maybe you wanted to have just half an inch extra at the waist and not one inch so it's up to you what you do with the waist i think the waist in fitting comes secondary to fitting the bust so i wouldn't really fuss too much about the waist i would prioritize is getting the bust to fit properly because you can always play with the waist later just have a think about it i think when you have a seam here and a seam on the side doing small little changes can make a huge difference and it's easier to adjust than when you just have to adjust on a side seam for example if you just have a full piece with a single dot in general when you pick a pattern that doesn't cater for your bust cup size and you just choose your size based on what your full bust needs you're going to end up usually with shoulders that are too wide and necklines that are too wide and gaping that's a problem with not doing full bust adjustments and trying to get away with not doing them. So I think this is important. I think it's something you should consider. And once you get the hang of it, it can literally take you like two minutes to draw some lines, cut up a few things, fill the back up with paper and you're done. It can be that fast. I hope this is helpful. You can always come back here and watch this several times. That's all from me. I'll see you again very soon 